All right, guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at the ventricles, so all the fluid-filled cavities within the brain. So imagine we take all of these fluid-filled cavities out of the brain. This is kind of what it's going to look like right here. So if we look right here, we have two lateral ventricles. All of this is lateral ventricle. All of this over here is also lateral ventricle. If we were to kind of differentiate what part of it is, this is kind of the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. This is the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle, and this is the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. And again, all of this is containing cerebrospinal fluid. All right, now if you look, we'll be able to see a specific structure that actually is what makes the cerebrospinal fluid, it's this little pink gummy fluid. All right guys, so we flipped it upside down so that you guys would be able to see this pink gummy stuff right there. And again, what is that? That's the choroid plexus of the lateral ventricle. That's what makes the cerebrospinal fluid. And then you have these things called ependymal cells that helps to circulate it throughout these actual ventricles. So again, that's the choroid plexus of the lateral ventricle. And you again, you have one over here too, right? Because you have two lateral ventricles. All right, guys, now connecting these two lateral ventricles together is this little tube right there. So if you see that little tube right there, number two, that's what basically drains the left lateral ventricle and the right lateral ventricle into a structure called the third ventricle. So again, this little tube right there is called the interventricular foramen. Another really important thing right here that I want to mention is, imagine I take a thin piece of paper and I put it right in between the two lateral ventricles right there. That is called the septum pellucidum. It's a thin membrane that separates the two lateral ventricles from one another. Okay, so again, septum pellucidum is a thin membrane, but that little tube that's draining the two lateral ventricles is called the interventricular foramen. Okay, so if you guys look here, we drained the uh, lateral ventricles through the interventricular foramen, and we drained it into this ventricle right here. This one right here is called the third ventricle. And if you remember, every ventricle has a choroid plexus. So you see that pink gummy stuff again? That pink gummy stuff is called the choroid plexus of the third ventricle. That's what makes the cerebrospinal fluid. And again, the ependymal cells are a part of the choroid plexus, so it circulates it. So again, if you see this guy right there draining the third ventricle right there, right in the uh, midbrain, that's going to be called the cerebral aqueduct. So we've got, we've got the cerebral aqueduct right there, which drains the third ventricle, and that runs through the midbrain. Then after that, it goes into this area back here, which I'm going to turn so you guys can see. This is called the fourth ventricle. And the fourth ventricle, again, it actually has, again, what is this? This little pink gummy stuff. It's called the choroid plexus, and that's what makes the cerebrospinal fluid. Now, one more thing before we're done is the cerebrospinal fluid can go a couple different directions. One is it could go down into what's called the central canal of the spinal cord, or it could go out through lateral aperture. So if we imagine over here is a lateral aperture, and over here is a lateral aperture. We actually give it a specific name. They actually call it the foramen lushka. And then if you imagine that there's another aperture, a median aperture, one coming out in front of me, like I'm coming out to the camera, and another one behind it out here, that's called the median apertures or the foramen magenti, okay? And basically what those do is they drain the fourth ventricle of the cerebrospinal fluid and puts it into the subarachnoid space. All right guys, so that pretty much gives us everything we need to know about the ventricular model.